What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time answering a question that I get fairly regularly, as the title probably told you. The question of that is, what exactly do I mean by a review after 100%? Now, to start this off, I think that's a fair question, because there's a lot of ways to qualify 100% in a video game. Is that just one run through the story, doing as much of the side content as you can? Is that multiple runs to see all the endings, all the side quests, etc.? All the achievements even can be considered 100% for some people. Now, I get this question fairly regularly, so I actually started putting the answer to it at the beginning of my reviews after 100%, and I figured I'd make this video to basically qualify that up front and have something to point people to for a more in-depth explanation of what exactly I mean. So for starters, personally, I don't think achievement lists by themselves are an acceptable way to qualify 100%. They're a very easy public way to convey the idea of 100%. However, some games don't have the most comprehensive achievement list out there, meaning that you can get all the achievements for the game, but there might still be a significant amount of content you didn't see. Using the most recent game I was playing as an example, uh, Baldur's Gate 1 actually, there is no achievement for playing through the Black Pits uh, little DLC bit, which is like an arena thing. Now, it wouldn't necessarily adversely affect your playthrough of that by any means, because at the end of the day, it's just a little self-contained story that doesn't have much to do with anything. But my point is, there is no achievement for that, which means even though I've gotten all the achievements for that game, I can't, just by pointing to that achievement list, say that I've actually done that. Now, personally, I actually go to great lengths to stay as honest with this as humanly possible. I typically don't review games that I can't legitimately 100%, or if I do review them, I make sure to qualify exactly what I have done. One example of this is Red Dead Redemption 2. I have 100% completion on the single player part of it. All the achievements, etc. that go with that, all the side content, everything basically that you can do. There are some unique interactions that are very hard to trigger that even with hundreds upon hundreds of hours of gameplay you won't necessarily see, but they don't really do anything for the actual game or experience. But I made sure to qualify that review with the fact that I have not actually gotten all of the online achievements. I think I'm actually missing five of them. And then in the instance of Pillars of Eternity 1, there is a Kickstarter achievement that you cannot get legitimately. Technically, if you really wanted to, it's possible to get like save files and things from other people or just download them online and then boot that up and then things like that can unlock achievements for you. But I go out of my way not to do things like that simply because clearly that's not in the spirit of what I am trying to do. And whenever people mention things like that, I just tell them straight up. Technically, yeah, I could do that. But again, I would rather stay as true as possible to what I do and just straight up tell people I can't do it because of this achievement rather than even do something like that. So now that I've qualified a bunch of things, let me actually give my regular answer to this question. What a review after 100% means for me is all of the main quests, all side quests, all map exploration, all the achievements as well. That part is included in there, even though by itself, yes, it is not the best metric. And then after that, it's anything specific to the game that is important in some way. That usually varies a little bit just simply by the type of game, because some games have features that other games don't that might be important to this game because it has it. So it's hard to quantify that. But typically speaking, broadly across every game, main quest, all side quests, all side content, all the achievements, all the map exploration. That is generally what I shoot for. Again, varies a little bit game by game, but that is the goal. So my plan is to probably put this on the top of my page for people who haven't subscribed to the channel so that when they come to the channel, this is the video they see that kind of gives this explanation about what my reviews after 100% are really all about. Because like you, I get annoyed with reviews that they clearly haven't played all of the game, or they played it on the most shallow surface level possible, and it's not really a true representation of what that game is. So if I'm going to give my opinion about something that developers spent years of their life on, I think I at least owe them the time to explore and play every bit of that content. With the reviews after 100% kind of honestly just getting tons of views compared to a lot of other things that I do, and generally being kind of the cornerstone of what this channel is going to do, Obviously, I do a lot of other stuff as well, but those are clearly what draw a lot of people in. So I felt it important to quantify this because people do occasionally ask this question. And I want to be as upfront and honest about this as humanly possible on my end. With that out of the way, guys, truly, thank you so much for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and the explanation. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you for being here and sharing your experience with video games with me. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.